Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Ultimate General American Revolution, an early access game being developed by the folks at Game Labs. The game is currently available directly through Game Labs' website. It is not on Steam. It is a real-time strategy and tactical war game with total war elements where you build sort of your provinces, if you will. You build buildings and supplies and infrastructure on the strategic map, raise armies on the strategic map, and then move those armies around. And when they collide with an enemy force, you are given the option, but do not have to, to resolve that battle on a tactical map. This is episode 19, I think it is, in this series, and we are in the process of invading Canada. In our last video, we destroyed an entire British force uh, near the Canadian border, and we are now moving on Quebec, which I have no idea how many troops the enemy might have at Quebec. We're about to sort of hit a stopgap before there. There's a small town, Tres. I'm sorry, guys. My pronunciation of a lot of these words is really bad. Um, before, uh, before we get there, uh, but we're moving with a force with both of our generals on the map. The Butcher, who's kind of George Washington. He's my character. And then Benedict Arnold uh, as we invade Canada. And we'll see where that goes from there. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel from the other night. So if you are interested in checking those out, there's a link in the description. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so we have a force of just shy of 4,000 men, 3,600 men, two officers, Butcher and Arnold, Moving north through Canada, we have taken Chambly, we've taken Montreal, we're leaving about 1,200 troops in three garrisons to support our flank, actually about 1,600 troops. So we've there's a considerable amount of wastage that we have to leave behind to support our advance because the loyalty in these towns is very low because Canada did not really want to join the U.S. in the revolution. So we've got... No loyalty at St. John's. We've got 1% at Burlington, 8% at Chambly. We've got 8% at Montreal. And we are now moving north with the remaining field army of ours of 3,600 men. There's a small number of those that are militiamen. It looks like we've got about 800 militiamen, 850 militiamen. The rest of that 3,600 are regulars, so 2,800 regulars. We're a bit strung out, but we're moving north toward Rivarez, we're going to go ahead and send Benedict Arnold north to scout while the rest of this formation sort of forms up. We'll send these guys here. There's definitely a garrison. It's only 450 men, so that's good news. Arnold went ahead and scouted ahead. It's not a ton of men. So we will move forward. I really wish there was a better way to, like, concentrate your troops in this game. It does not handle concentration of force well. But we are moving forward. By pausing a little bit further north, McNutt and sort of the lead elements get a chance to um, replenish their conditioning. So that's good. Our provisions are fine. We've got over 60 provisions here. Loyalist militia at the border. As Continental Army forces planning an invasion of Canada, Loyalist militia units made up of Canadian and American Loyalists are strategically stationed along the border. These volunteers help form a strong defensive line, making it difficult for the Continental Army to penetrate Canada. So 420 and 140 men. Oh, they doubled the garrison at Rivers. They all look like they're regulars here, but that 420 men have got to be, got to be those boys. They don't look like militiamen, though. Like, does, do the British have militiamen in the game? Is that a mechanic? I don't know the answer to that question. Um. Also, I'm in, in, in the red. Uh, let's see. What are we going to sell? Well, we got a fur, so let's sell that. Two textiles, so sell that. And we got five copper. There we go. Back in the black. Do, do, do. And okay. All right. So we got two grand for the moment. 
may have to sell some of other other goods. Those rifles are not are not decently valuable. What's our production look like right now anyway? 43 U.S. muskets, 20 civilian muskets. The 20 civilian muskets are basically barely meeting our, meeting our needs. Um, let's just not even produce the wagons right now. I don't have the wood or the horses to do it. So let's just get rid of that. It'll increase production of these guys. Twenty low ranking officers. We're raising funds first, so we probably should do that. Copper, yes. All right. Copper is a nice little resource to turn around and sell. All right, boys, let's go attack the rivers. We've still got a, a pretty considerable advantage in manpower. Cross the Maurice Rivers. Why are you boys not moving? Advance. Why can we not fight this tactical battle? Is it too small of a... Do we outnumber them by too much? It doesn't... It's That's weird. It's not triggering a tactical battle. Who's rotting? The British? Okay. Foreign aid. 700 bucks from the someone. From the French, I'm assuming. Whoa. Why are you guys sprinting? I didn't tell you to sprint. I don't like that I don't get a, tr a tactical battle trigger. I know we've got a big advantage of manpower, but I've definitely lost battles like this before. Also, 140 troops coming from, I'm guessing, Quebec? Okay. All right, so we're overrunning the garrison at Rivers. The, those 400 and whatever men retreating. Are my wagons still somewhere? I should probably have them head north. All right, so they surrender. Nice. So the 140 men that came south surrendered by the looks of it. And we inflicted about a third casualties on either of the, the other guys. We lost about 200 men. The enemy lost three to 400-ish. And we didn't even get to fight a battle. We just sort of took the town. Okay, so there are now, well, it said there were POWs. Where did they go? Oh, 186 POWs at Montreal. All right. Meanwhile, move the wagon to come join us. I am going to have to leave behind another garrison probably of militiamen. Really shouldn't have artillery with six pounders with the militiamen. We'll leave behind these 400 men, and we get weaker as the enemy gets stronger. The paradox of invading a hostile territory. As, they, as you advance further, the enemy gets stronger, and your own forces get strung out and weaker. All right. Uh, do we capture anything? Maybe a couple of brown besses. That's about it. Maybe a three-pound galloper. I don't think we had 20 before. I think we had like 17. Let's just sell four of those. Give me a little bit of a little bit more money. All right, we're eight days from raising funds. Another victory gets our reputation up towards 60 almost. It'll go even further if we took Quebec. Quebec. Okay. Do we need these guys to pause? They probably want to... We'll give them a day. We'll give them two days or so to get their conditioning back. I don't know what the enemy has at Quebec. Looks like they drew some provisions from Montreal. 
Also, the longer you hold a place, generally, the more the loyalty starts to go up. Right, we get a little bit more cash from Congress. Also, we get some prestige for taking this town. Nice. Warehouse of ammo or something. All right. Go ahead and join the garrison there. Oh, wow. Look at all the ammo and provisions we've got. Let's move the, the wagon up here. I'm assuming it'll take some of that. Okay. We'll wait till the 17th. 2,000 gold from a continental patriot. Also, request for state government. I don't really know how government efficiency impacts anything, but. So, Torres has. Okay, so I think the units directly pulled provisions for themselves by the looks of it. All right, so we've got 2,900 troops after our casualties. We had, what, 3,400 coming north, 400 were detached. So we lost about 100 men. Okay. So now the drive on Quebec. Boys have been sitting around for a few days doing nothing. The commands don't seem very reliable in terms of like when you multiple you select multiple units and tell them to move. A lot of times they just sit around doing nothing. I don't know if there's like something blocking them on the map or what. Can I just order these guys to forage? Let's see what the enemy has at Quebec. Is Quebec unoccupied? What? The British didn't didn't garrison Quebec? Okay. That's anticlimactic. <laughs> Yay? <laughs> oh, I thought there was going to be a big battle. <laughs> well, there you go. Quebec is ours. Whoa. Yay. 25 reputation, $25,000, and 100 wood. All right. Lull. <laughs> Okay, so now what? Let's take a look at the strategic map. So they didn't occupy Quebec. There's a, a road south to Norwalk, Halifax, Frank. We know they've got armies at George and Frank, so they're probably strong along the coast. They also have an army at Salem. So I suppose the next step in the campaign, obviously we don't lose Quebec, but... Look at all those provisions. Give us some Tim Horton. I've I've heard I hear Tim Hortons is bad though. Um I got a lot of wood that I don't probably need. I could probably sell it. But I got 20 grand right now, so I don't know that I need to that'll go away real fast. Probably start paying our soldiers. Um Norwalk is the next objective, and then we can swing down on Halifax, Frank. You know, it'll be interesting is if while we swing south from ha toward Halifax is if we drive north from Boston. This large garrison is sort of necessary to keep Gage in place, but. Silly Putty, thank you very much for the bits. Appreciate the support. Are my alerts off? They are. Appreciate that.
The rebel yell, not not those rebels, the other ones. <laughs> okay. So Okay. Is Canada now a colony? We scroll down here. The province of Quebec. They don't like me. Mining is always the goal, right? You want more resources. Okay. Mining, 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 mining for everybody. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I think what I might do is I will bring my commander, Butcher, south to Boston so that we can have an army move north towards Salem. We can concentrate all these garrisons here, Lovell, Stevens, Lester, and Boston, and that'll give me a force of about... Ooh, a hype train. Thanks for the sub, Avenced. 25 months I appreciate it um but something me what a thousand men between these two 1500 so we have about 3300 men at boston i think the british have around three grand there we could probably raise a new regiment or two we'll have here for the bits war cross we will have Arnold stay behind with these troops, 3,000 of them, but he's going to leave behind the 416 militiamen, which actually what we'll do here, let's switch their artillery out to something worse. And then give the regulars some of these better guns. Um... So he'll leave behind about 400 men. That'll give him about 2,500-ish when you factor in the general staff to advance south toward Norwalk and really in toward, like, northern British possessions. I don't know that there's an end state for the campaign yet, again, in its current early access state, but I'm assuming I've got to leave behind garrisons at all these places to prevent rebellion. But look, Montreal's coming over to our side. They're at ten percent loyalty. Good old Canadians. All you need to do is just give them a little bit of time, and they will warm to rebellion. All right, four days for raising funds, which I don't need this minute, but more money is always good. Uh, we could spend a fair chunk of reputation on like speeding up research. That is an option. Mm. I would like to increase my general limit. But I don't see that as an option anyway here. Weren't we researching one of these? Or do we finish everything we were researching over here? I don't see a little green bar indicating progress. Yeah, give me more firearms. Okay. Also, we've got a chunk of officers that now, too, sitting around. This is automatically a priority. I probably don't need Montreal to remain a supply priority anymore, either. So I can turn the priority trigger off for those. And for Hubberton, too. But we do want to take Lehman. We know they've got troops here based on this flag. Maybe I, I'd be tempted to double back down to Lehman just to try and solidify the front here, but, the, but that would leave Quebec too vulnerable. So I think Norwalk, Halifax... Those are the logical directions to strike from. So 
First things first, let's do this. Let's get the butcher out of here. Commander in Chief stole the glory from uh what's his face? Why don't you scout ahead actually? It's always the risk you die. <laughs> like you could get killed. That's the other thing. But while they rest up here, rest on their laurels, why don't you go scout out the British? All alone with fifty men riding through the north woods. All right, those are the troops retreating that we had fought at Troy's. 2,000 men here. Those are small units, though. Moosehead Lake. That's funny. My wife grew up on a, on a lake called Moose Lake. Not in Canada, but... So Norwalk is actually unoccupied. Joy riding through Canada. Halifax has 600 boys. Oh my God. 7,000 troops at Fort Frank. Only 700 at Fort George. Okay. Southern Carolina is declaring independence. Faced with the threat of a continental invasion from the south. British officials in the north issue a call for loyalists to join their ranks in response. A significant number of loyalist volunteers and militia units rally to the British cause. Bastards. Traitors to their own country. Have a good one, Anaris. Thanks for coming out. 600 to Falmouth. Anybody at Ly Lehman? Lyman? Lehman? 300 there. Portsmouth might be unoccupied. It is. They're coming after the, the CCO. Well, they put 300 troops into Portsmouth because of my general riding around up here in the north. And as I said, about 3,000 at Salem. Okay. All right. Well, Butcher, you can return to Boston. All right. So, that's some pretty useful intelligence on that joyride of Canada. Meanwhile, Benedict Arnold's boys, they got all the supplies. They got all the provisions. They got everything they need to begin an invasion. Magnook is not on any supply lines. That's a lot of men. I think those are all loyalists. I don't know that any of those are regulars. It's hard to tell. So two soldiers standing next to each other. Those funky little hats. Yeah, I mean, like, they all look the same to me. But I'm hoping they're loyalists, and so they're effectively militia. Um... Not enough muskets. Really? Who's using your muskets? I got none in the arsenal. Can I buy any in the market? I don't think so. No. They only get gifted to you. Okay. I think five cannons is enough for an artillery battery. Oh, I need to assign a project. Okay. Back to the dragoons. Probably only have a minimum 25 man battery there. Okay, 
So increased loyalty somewhere. Maybe. Or not. Okay, so we are going to leave behind the militia at Quebec. I'm sure leaving militiamen behind. Totally no one cares, right? We're going to advance on Norwalk. Two brigades of troops. Virginia has declared independence. Arnold. And the supply wagons. All told, about 2,500 troops. Let's go get Nor Noriwick. Noriwick. Norwalk, I don't know, however you pronounce that. Hopefully they don't take the 2,000 men here and move directly on Quebec, but I'm going to assume they won't. Supply wagon, you can see the provisions are gradually being reduced. But that's good because they're keeping the troops in supply that are marching toward Norwalk, which only has 200 men. So it should be easy pickings for us. They're going to come out and fight me in the open field? That seems foolish. Numbers are too lopsided, I think, so I can't fight this t battle tactically. And they surrendered. Hell yeah, brother. I captured the POWs. We, I don't know if we waited too long or if we took those supplies, I couldn't tell. But we've got a nice little break. Quebec. Oh, 140 men left the garrison, the militia. Don't leave me. They're undermining the morale of the militia. Join the garrison. Get in there. All right. So we now have 2,400 troops at Norwalk. We'll leave behind the 200 regulars of the 2nd Connecticut. And then advance on Fort Halifax. Or maybe not. I don't know. I'm a little nervous here because we know the British had like 7,000 troops over here. So I don't want to get stuck in a situation where I'm outnumbered 3 to 1. Makes me a little bit uneasy. So maybe now is the time for the butcher, yours truly, to advance from that direction. So I think what we will do is we will leave. Let's do this. We're going to shift some leaders around. The butcher's going to go to level. Can we get Canada to love us? Doesn't look like it. What do I need to build to make them like me? 
attribu- attribution and all loyalty bonuses by 15%. Build them churches. That doesn't seem to... <laughs> I don't think that's terribly realistic, but whatever. All right. We got 207 POWs in Quebec. All right. Meanwhile, I'm going to pull Daniel Morgan's boys out. I'm going to pull these boys out. We'll leave 1,600 men there just so we've got some defense if the enemy comes knocking. I'm going to move these 800 men to... I'd like to move them to Lovell, but I don't I don't know that they have a path to get there. So let's move them to, to Lehman, I guess. Because that's where we're going to go. So we're going to move them there. Butcher's going to move him his troops into here. And we'll pull these troops out. He'll join these boys up here. So we'll have about 1,300, maybe 1,200 troops to attack Lehman. Two grand, I'll take it. Moving through the wilderness with no supply wagons, but it's a good time of the year to be doing it in June as opposed to, you know, in the winter. There's 400 enemy troops here. All right, Morgan's boys are now in contact. We'll form up a little army of 1,200 men and go after Lehman. Maybe we can capture the bastards. Quebec replaced the loss of the mutineers by the looks of it. I have projects at HQ. I do. Apparently three people are doing nothing. Um, I guess we'll do this. Can I build new types of ships? So dry dock is probably important. What about actual ship types? I don't really want to build brigs. I want damn frigates. 24 pounders. Can you actually, 32 pounders, can you actually build a ship of the line at any point in this game? A 32 pounder, I mean, you got to have a bigger. Zion, Hermione, these are fifth rates. Fifth rates don't have 32 pounders, do they? I mean, we're never going to have the money to build build big navy anyway, but... Um, we already did the Henry Knox thing. Being able to build the six pound field, we'll, we'll, do, we'll go back to the ironworks. I was going to say, like, six pound field gun seems nice, but. Okay, coffee. I, I always thought the 32 pounders were not on fifth rates, but I suppose, right, like a difference perhaps between could versus should. All right, so with our reputation being 111, increases colonial support. You'd think it would help recruitment. Or something. Like, is there any reason? I'm curious if there's any reason to stockpile reputation in the game. Other than it making you more resilient. You want to build a big navy? Who do you think you are? The British? Okay. Fair.
I thought 32 pounders were mostly ship of the line guns, like third and whatnot rates at this time in history. Maybe that changed later. Um, all right, let's give them a moment to rest. You guys, you had a long walk from up here, Morgan. Your conditioning sucks. So let's get it up a little bit. Committee of Secret Correspondence. The Committee of Secret Correspondence has sent Silas Dean, Silas, oh my God, Silas Dean, to win French aid for the Americas. Dean arrived in France and the negotiations resulted in France sending some supplies to the Americas. 200 ammo, 10 three pound galloper guns, and 1,000 Charleville 66s. I will take it. Thank you, Silas. All right, now we need to re-equip some of these troops. These boys, I believe, are using all civilian muskets. Can I not equip them while they're in the field? That, I suppose, is a logical restriction. Never mind. We shall go in and take Lyman, Lehman, whatever. Let's give you a moment to get your conditioning up. So we'll wait a day or two. Just outside Lehman. I will say the AI, if it's got a 7,000 man army sitting at Fort Frank, they should be more aggressive at campaigning it. They, they're very passive at this point. But again, early access. All right, let's fight. I'm sure they're going to retreat, but we haven't fought a, we haven't fought an actual battle in a while, so let's do it. I, I am just, ever since I've done it the first time, a huge, oh, they're retreating already. Okay. I knew they would do that. Just disappointed. AI's like, three to one? No thanks. But some of them are militia. Charge! Okay. Get into the city. All right, nice. So they got some provisions and ammo that we were able to take from, I believe. So they're they're retreating to Fort Fort George. Um, Neiman opens up a path to Falmouth. So we will leave a garrison there. We don't need that. We'll basically just pivot the garrison from Lovell to Lehman, and then we will move our troops south to Fort Stevens. because I'm going to take Salem head on. Is the strategic map real time? Yes. Head down to Stevens. We'll pull the 500 men out of Stevens, the 450 men out of Leicester, Thousand plus six hundred, so sixteen hundred. All right, so we'll have about thirty four hundred troops. Boston did previously have a bunch of recruits. Looks like they don't right now. Let's do this. We've already got this regular regiment just chilling. Go ahead and give them some galloper guns. Unless I don't think we have enough four power. So give them some galloper guns. Supplies. And then we will raise another regiment of regulars at Boston. I don't know why it shows you the Hessians for the British. Like, I don't think it would let me use them, so why would it show them to me?
All right, so I'll raise another regiment of regulars at Boston. Try and get their priority up. I don't have enough manpower at Boston quite at the moment to do that, but I'm assuming we can draw reinforcements in from elsewhere. What muskets do they not have enough of? Brown Bessis probably? Yeah. All right, well, we've got sufficient U.S. muskets. Just swap them out. Okay. Don't want to leave Lyman unoccupied. Let the enemy move in. Always keep a garrison along all your frontline cities. Sort of my the lesson I've taken from this game. The enemy will generally, not always, sometimes they will go around you like often Frederick will flank Ticonderoga to get down to Saratoga directly. But generally the enemy seems to follow the actual supply lines on the strategic map. So this this view here for their lines of advance. So if you've got a, a city that's directly linked via supply to the enemy, make sure you garrison it if you can. Whoa. That's a weird graphical glitch. Yeah, they were pretty aggressive early in the game, I will say. Nobody, but they've been fairly passive of late. Right, so those troops are being raised in Boston. Those two regular regiments are almost completely equipped. Not enough, not enough what? Not enough wagons? All right, so let's go back to the production management and start making some wagons. We've got horses, so we can do it. Stevens. Stevens linked. Yeah, but whatever. We'll be we'll be close by. You know what? I did raise I did raise that unit. I don't need Stevens. I don't I don't need the militia unit from Stevens. I hope, anyway. Okay. Yay, New York merchants giving me cash. Why are they moving so slow? Are they exhausted? Yeah, I guess their conditioning's low. All right, these guys are basically at full strength now. So we could raise another regular regiment at Boston. It would improve our odds. We got the, both of these are at full strength. Maybe it just makes sense to move these two regiments in and let them draw reinforcements instead. Cash isn't unlimited either, so. Uh, did they get enough wagons, though? Looks like I assume they did. Uh, there's none in stockpiles, so we'll give it. A, we'll give it another day. That money's gonna all be gone, though. So it'll be probably a July assault on Salem and the British Army there. And uh, then maybe at some point we can concentrate enough troops to threaten the 7,000 troops up near Fort Frank. Negotiations in the shadows. 121 what? Charleville 77s? Nope. I don't need your weapons.
Okay. Maybe they can draw the reinforcements at Leicester without me needing to go to Boston. They can. There you go. They're, they're already drawing those reinforcements. Nice. We are going to disband one of these militia units to give us some additional... Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. One of these militia units we're going to disband. That will give me recruits in Boston. And then we will raise a new infantry regiment there. With Fusiliers. I will need to sell some additional stuff because recruiting those troops is not going to be cheap. But we've got 36 copper available to us, which is a nice little chunk of cash. It'll probably all go away real quick, but we also have some furs. And some textiles. I'll hold off with the eight grand. I'm, I honestly think that eight grand is going to vanish in like a split second, but... As our, you can see, it's kind of cool as our army gradually evolves from being almost entirely militia to now being a majority of, of regular troops. 7,000 gold. Just poof, gone. And there, two grand gifted to us. And the recruits, this unit drew quite a few. Do we have any other hunters? No, seven. I guess we'll do some Charlevilles. I don't have army officers for this. Damn. Also, it looks like Benedict Arnold is not suffering much desertion or anything like that. Let's go to the headquarters screen. I don't have the option to do recruit of low-ranking officers yet. One day and we get dragoons. That'll be sweet. Dragoons! You can now create regular cavalry regiments and assign them dragoon companies. Dragoons are mounted infantry who can use horse for mobility or dismount and fight on foot. They can use a shorter musket type or carbines for an easier handling and increased portability. Hell yeah, brother. I'd rather have heavy cavalry with sabers, but... I need more officers. I really need some officers. Did we, we built the school in Boston, right? Yeah, we did. I had a nice little chunk of officers, and then I went recruiting mad, and now they're all gone. Is Lester on there? No. All right. Everybody move to Boston. Get ready for the assault. I'm not going to raise Dragoons quite yet. I don't have the cash. I don't think. I don't know what good uh, intelligence department will do me, but spend some reputation. Do that right away. Hey, we got a USS Corquette. 
based out of Massachusetts Bay. And I now have the intelligence department. So we've got a 18 gun brig at Boston and two 12 gun schooners. Are they brigs or whatever they are down at uh, Newport? So in theory, if we could link the three up, we might be able to fight some British ships. The problem is getting the, the two squadrons together. The British Navy is dramatically superior. Um, seems like this guy, Elon Asfra, has the best highlighted traits, so we'll make him our head of intelligence. Ooh, that impacts loyalty. Let's spend a little bit of cash on that, even though I'm not sitting pretty there. And I want more generals. I don't get on that. But really, I just want more officers. That's what I badly need. You know, we've got 2,300 civilian muskets that weren't sort of not using anymore, so we'll sell those. For some cash. I'm really not using the Charlevilles either. But they're pretty solid, so we'll keep them in stockpile. Okay. Sell our surplus resources. And just like that, we got 11 grand, which I'm sure will all vanish in a second. Yeah, Benedict Arnold. Upstanding, reliable, fine individual. Anyway, Salem has... Oh, no. They have British cavalry. Only looks like one unit of 50. But I don't know if you guys remember in one of the battles earlier in the campaign, they absolutely wrecked us. Now, given that most of our troops, I think all or most, now have United States muskets, the civilian muskets really don't have meleeing capabilities. Like you can see the melee's 18, the U.S. melee's 28, 33 on the Charleville 66s, which will equip these militiamen with they might be kind of wasted on them but everybody needs better weapons if if they're available civilian man i didn't realize we had this many units still chilling with civilians i guess we will use those charlevilles pretty heavily here Man, I had a huge percentage of this army still chilling with civilians. We've got a few left, but the vast majority are now much better. So, good thing we checked that, huh? All right. Suppose now is the time. We outnumber the enemy by 800. No, I, those are not ships I have in the market. Or is that? If I go to ship. These are available ships we could purchase. So we could buy a six-rate sloop of war, for example, for 10 grand. So these are available to be purchased. Those are not the actual ships we have in our fleet right now. The ships we have in our fleet right now the one USS Cairo at Boston and then the USS Mars and Scorpion down at Newport. I'd love to swing in along the coast, but I just get nervous of doing that because I think they'll get crushed. How is Boston not loyal? Do I really got to propagandize them? 
You need to build a damn church. Get loyal. I don't really want to waste a waste a building slot in Boston on that, but um, Quebec is at three percent. Are they losing loyalty? Troy's is at three. Montreal's up to 16%. Hell yeah. Come to our side, Canadians. The propaganda church. Damn right. Um, okay. So we got about 4,000 men at Boston about to march north toward Salem. But we have been going for almost an hour at this point. And while I regret that there was no real battle in this video and that we took Quebec without really a fight... Uh, we are going to wrap this video up here. I'm anticipating a big, big fight at Salem in our next video. We're going to move those 4,200 troops north. We're going to try and crush the British. I may also bring the 500 troops at Fort Stevens over as well to increase our strength because while we do have a healthy advantage, about 800 men, a little bit less than a 25% advantage in terms of manpower, those those Dragoons are giving me the heebie-jeebies. And uh, I don't love going up against enemy cavalry. I feel a little bit better that unlike the last time we fought our troops, many of our troops have much better weapons and we have a considerable amount of artillery. Although we had artillery then too. So I think it's really just going to come down to how effectively we use that. Also a lot of regular troops, um, but it felt like cavalry was heavily OP'd. I know I did get dragoons, um, but I don't think that's the same type of cavalry as what the British have. Even if it is, I don't have the manpower or the officers to lead Dragoons. We have no officers in reserve, so really, we've got to try and go now. And if we do win this battle, if we can reinforce those troops down there in the south, and we can link them up with the troops up at Norwick, we might be able to bring those two forces together with about 6,000 soldiers to fight the British near Frank on more even footing. So the campaign really seems to hinge on this upcoming battle. If we can defeat and crush the British and inflict horrific losses on the British troops down there that will give us a better chance to meet the British at Frank and more even odds. But the battle of Salem will be next video. Any drive on Frank will probably come after that, but big battle coming up. Hope you guys tune in for it. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. Leave your thoughts below as always. And until next time, this is the historical gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching and until next time I'm out. Bye-bye.